Well, good everyone, and welcome back to another David Maxwell golf video, where today it is an exciting video because I've got some upgrades to the camera. I've added a wide angle lens, so hopefully that's going to help broaden the picture. I've also got a much brighter light behind the camera to help lighten up this room a little bit, just to help improve the content for you guys. I really appreciate every single one of my subscribers. So we're going to continue to try and improve that. We're going to add some different camera features and those sort of things just to make the content that little bit better again. And uh, I can't wait till we get out on course because that is going to be some serious content and I'm really going to up the quality there as well. But today, First of all, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button, smash the like button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can see all the great content that's gonna be coming up because there is a lot, and I'm so excited for what's gonna happen over the Christmas period. Can't say too much about it yet, but I'm very, very excited for it. One of the requests that's actually come up quite a bit recently um, is that people are wanting to know, well, they've got the Garmin R10, they're starting to get some accurate numbers, but how do they actually get better with it? How do they practice with it? How do they use it to incorporate into their golf game, to bring their handicaps down, to start playing better golf, so it's more than just a home simulator and some home fun? That's what we're gonna get into today, so let's do it. So, uh, I've gone through and I've seen that my 55 meter shots no matter whether I use a sand wedge or whether I use a lob wedge are coming up short, which is no good. I obviously don't have the confidence to try and hit it past the pin even when they're front pins. Also, it's the same with my 90 meter shots is that I find that I'm winding up short. And that's not good, but it is good because I can work on it here in the Garmin R10. So we're gonna go and jump into the range and we're gonna go into the approach shots. I really love this section and I'm gonna start here. So play golf, uh, I'm gonna start with the 55 meter range and I'm just going to start with a lob wedge and then I'm also going to hit a sandwich to the same spot. All right lob wedge it is 55 meter range now the DeWiz golf watch will also help with this um, but basically I'm just getting my feels here and I just need to get close to that 55 meter pin and that is exactly why we need to practice this because that's exactly what I can see on course sometimes so um, it's like I'm feeling that I'm actually hitting it, but if I'm not quite getting the contact, then I'm winding up short. So my off the tee is fantastic, but then when I get to these chip shots, when I hit a great drive, there's nothing worse than leaving it short, not hitting a green regulation when you're 55 meters away. It's so frustrating. See, I've hit that, and it felt like I hit it 100. But that's what I need to do. I need to teach myself to start hitting it a little bit more to get that distance and actually get me inside that circle. There we go, I've actually got one past the pin, so that's good. That's probably a hit that too hard. That's not too bad, actually that might be in the circle. That is in the circle, see? Perfect example of where I've personally thought that I've actually hit it too hard and I'm two meters from the pin. Whereas on course, when I've taken it out on course, I can do that exact same shot except I don't hit it that hard and I'm winding up like the first shot short. So that's a lob wedge, we got one in the circle. Let's get the sand wedge now with a 56 degree. 56 degree, now this is a bit more of a different shot. I like to play this with a low kind of cut. So let's do that. And that's passed and that is kind of typical. If I try and play that shot, I can nail this one a bit too far. Um, or I do the exact same thing that I did the first time around. So that's wound up, that's okay. That's nicer, but that might be short. Yeah, see that's short. So my short one is better with a 56 compared to a 60. My short one with a 60 is shorter. And that's something that is to note as well when you're practicing is that What's the worst, best shot, if that makes any sense, that I can play? So, from this range, my worst shot with a 56 is better than my worst shot with a 60. So, percentage-wise, I should be using a 56 from this yardage. That's nice. And that's in the circle. So. Well, right on the edge of it. Let's now go to the 90 meter. So I'm gonna to switch to the 90 meter, 92 meters. This is a, a very tricky range for me. I find 92 meters extremely difficult because it's kind of in between a 56 degree and a gap wedge. A gap wedge can go too long and I have, again, nailed them 
quite often over the back and depending on the wind I can find myself in trouble or with a 56 I can wind up short but I prefer to be honest to try and almost hit a low gap wedge over a full 56 but we're going to try and hit a full 56 to start now if I hit them all like that You can notice the spin there, the spin's actually a little bit down. So I've got that a little bit chunky and pulley, which is fine in here off a mat. But being completely honest and transparent, if I took that out on the course and I did that, that could be a recipe for a duff. So you get a lot more forgiveness indoors off your mat than what you would, you know, out on the grass on the course. That was nice. That was really nice. And look at that. So that's the really good one, that's nearly in the hole. Okay, and the spin difference is massive there, 10,266 as opposed to uh, whatever, 6,000 something something the last one was. That's nice too. That could be actually in the hole. 10,479. So there's some good shots, let's jump into the 52. While I'm practicing, I don't necessarily like to hit too many shots with the same wedge over and over again. I like to mix them up because that's what you do on course. You don't just sit there hitting the same shot over and over and over again. You're constantly changing clubs and that's what I like to do in here. All right, so 52, we're going to go to the exact same pin. Now 52 for me gets to about 105. That's my, my max distance, 105 meters or 112 yards. So, but I do like this distance with the 52. And that's pretty much why. I feel like I can flight it down and I feel like I can judge that 92 to 95 meter distance really well with a 52 degree. So pretty much most of the time on course, if I find myself out from this distance, I'm gonna be hitting a 52 degree. Left the face open, but the distance will be good. Again, the distance is, is perfect. So. It's not going to be the same for everyone, guys. It is going to be different depending on the style of player that you are. I'm not here. I'm not an accredited coach. I need to make that quite clear. Um, but I'm just showing you how I practice with the Garmin R10 and what works for me. You might like to hit a 56, 92 meters over a 52. That could, and that's completely fine. This is just how I do it and how I practice. I'm trying to get as many of these balls in the circle, hit three or four shots with each club, and then move on. I've hit that really nice. So you can see that, I mean, those three shots are pretty automatic from that distance for me. Um, where it does get tricky on course and where I said that I nail it over the back is when there's wind. If there's wind there, it's a little bit gusty and I think that I've got to hit it harder. I can sail it over the back, but I'm pretty happy with those results. The next part, guys, is finding the distance that you least like and working on it. It's so easy to find a distance that we're really good at. For me, it would be a 7 iron at 165 meters. I love that distance. It's a perfect number for me. And I could sit here and I could hit shot after shot after shot and hit green after green after green. But the reality is I'm almost never exactly that distance away from the pin on course. I am, however, quite often around about the 138 meter mark, which we have a pin here for, and that distance just doesn't really suit me all that well. We have elevated greens here, so sometimes I'm hitting that distance up into a green, or sometimes I'm hitting it down into a green, or into wind, or back from wind. So we need to practice those shots with a variety of clubs, not just one, and hit the same green. Who doesn't clean the club, David? This is terrible. I'm gonna to move to 138 meter pin. So 138 meters here. I'm gonna start with a pitching wedge. One of the reasons why I'm gonna start with a pitching wedge is yes, it is probably a little bit far for me with a pitching wedge, 138, 140, it's about 153 yards thereabouts. Let's, um, let's just see how we go. So if we can flight it low and turn it over and take the spin off the ball, we'll definitely get there. So I've taken the spin off, you can see that, 5,884. And we got the distance. Now I'm not gonna say that that's comfortable for me to do that, especially on course if I'm trying to hit it that far. Um, but it's nice to know that you've got a club that you can get there if you really have to step on one. That was smoked. That could actually be in the hole. Oh, 140 carry, that's a, that's a big pitching wedge.
That's on the pen. Get in the hole. Oh, do it, do it. Oh, so close, wow. Okay, this is all live by the way, so you can see that, well you can't delete shots from this thing anyway, but sometimes people think that you do. Anyway, it's all live. Um, that's the pitching wedge. Now I need to hit, you can see that I can hit that pitching wedge there and surprisingly, it's a pretty comfortable number. So maybe I should be doing that more on course rather than thinking that I'm in between clubs, when in fact I might actually not be. So I've got a nine iron now. So just hit the pitching wedge there, I've got a nine iron. And to me, I'm gonna to need to take some off this to get to the same distance. There we go. That's really good. So, I'm actually pretty happy with that. This practice session here is going quite well. Ooh, I pulled it. And that's what kind of can happen. So I've pulled it and I've thinned it, so I've nailed it. But for me, when I'm trying to knock down clubs, I, I can kind of smother them and then you get that left one. So let's not do that. Let's keep the shaft lean there and the hands going through the ball. There we go. That's much nicer, but it is definitely, I mean, that's pin high, that's actually pretty good. But it is definitely a lot more inconsistent than just having a full shot. But if I'm into wind, I mean, this is all static, right? So there's no wind, there's no weather variability, there's none of that. There's no weather variability and there's no wind. So all of this is, is trying to flight down shots and get them to a target. That was absolutely pure. I think that's gonna to be too far. But I hit, oh no, that's gonna be perfect. Get in the hole. That's me again thinking I've hit it too far and it's not. Wow, okay. So, now the nine iron, I like to kind of play leapfrog. So I've tried to hit a nine iron and knock it down and I've got it to that distance. Now I need to find a pin that the nine iron is actually gonna be good for. Which ironically, I don't think there is a pin. For me, my nine iron number is kind of about 146, 147. Okay, we'll just go 151. Uh, that might be a bit of a misread. Sometimes you do get those. I flush that, but 3,000 spin, that's why it's gone so long. That was a pull. Might get the green, no. See, I'm trying to get it a little bit further than what it actually goes. Just a bit stretchy, isn't it? So, that's pin high. That should get there. So I can do it, I can hit them there, I can get the distance. That's, there you go, 148. Um, which is pretty much my, like I said, my 99 number. It's just stretching it a little bit, knowing exactly how far you've got in each club. That's gonna be almost identical. Yep, let's jump into a different club. Let's go a little bit of a longer iron. So we've hit a few short irons. I'm gonna go into a longer iron. I'm gonna hit a six and 183. So let's start with a 183 meter pin with a six iron. That should be pretty close. That was beautiful. Nice. Oh, that's, I did not get that one. Swung hard enough at it, but it came off the toe. That's where the rogue forgiveness comes in. That's a rogue ST Pros, by the way. That's a different video. But if, uh, if you've got irons where you hit them like that and you're ending up 20 meters short, I mean, if you're not a professional, just help yourself out a little bit. These are the best things that I've ever done for my game. I miss hit that and I'm still on the green. Previously, I would have been well short. That was piped. I mean, from 185 meters, I'm taking every single one of these. So my long irons are typically pretty good. So when I come in here and I'm practicing, I'm not gonna labor too long on these. Um, when I'm coming in here and I'm practicing, I'm generally always working on 
uh, hitting it into the greens with the, with the shorter irons and the wedges. I'll probably hit more greens in regulation with the long, actually no, that nine iron wasn't very good, but well, actually that's a perfect point because the nine iron was the one where I was missing those greens from 150, right? So um, that's where I need to work on that 150 meter range, which is probably, you know, a knockdown eight iron. All right, so after all of this, you're playing well, you're starting to hit some greens in regulation, you're building up some confidence through the approach section, you know your wedges are going pretty good, you need to learn how to hit the middle of the fairway. Now, I know it's a, <laughs> it's a strange concept, but I've actually taught myself to try and hit the ball straight, and one thing the Garmin R10 can do, or any launch monitor for that matter, is it shows you a middle line of a fairway. Just try and hit that. Just know your stock yardages and, and practice yourself, like grind into your game, just hitting the ball straight. When I mean straight, I mean have your shot shape, whether you're a fader or a drawer of the ball, whatever, but just aim to finish the ball as close to that middle line as possible, and that will definitely help your game because then when you get on course, I, I tell myself mentally, just like in the simulator, just hit it straight, just aim as up straight down a fairway, whether you're hitting into a green or whether you're trying to hit a fairway, just aim straight. Let's do that. All right, so Awesome Golf has this really awesome driving range, and basically, like I've just mentioned, all that I'm trying to do is hit that middle line. I'm just trying to aim straight, which I've got my Garmin aimed right, and it should draw a little bit, and pretty much just on repeat. This is a, uh, a seven iron, by the way. So, I've absolutely smoked that. Um, 166 carry is bang on my seven iron number, 165 meters, you're looking at 180 odd yards. That's pretty much my seven iron stock. If you want to, you can add a little green out there. Uh, you can turn this on and you can put that at whatever you're gonna be hitting to. For me, like I said, seven iron is always gonna be that 165 number. Oh, that's, that's not good. That nearly literally hit the hosel. That's why we practice. It happens. Not very often anymore, but it happens. There we go, redemption. It's a little fade. What's going on there? 2000 spin, might be a slight misread. Sometimes you do get that. I've got the RCT balls, and as much as I love the RCT balls, I do find that once you've actually hit them quite a bit, I've hit this one quite a lot, you, you still need to replace them, even though it looks like there's a bit of wear in there. I wonder if the metal comes loose inside the ball, but. So again, that's pretty much all I'm trying to do, is just have a consistent swing, a consistent pattern. Yeah, there's something wrong with this ball. That said, that went one, 157. Okay, might need to change this in a minute. And that's pretty much, I'm, I'm just trying to get myself what I call a stripe. So if you start striping it, by the way, the term striping it in a simulator, when you see a whole bunch of shots and you have literally a stripe, that's when you're striping it. That's where that comes from. Bit of trivia, if you didn't know. And that is when you are really striping it. Yeah, pretty happy with those. If you want to, you can practice a shot that you're really gonna be needing on a course that you may not have practiced a whole lot. So for me lately, the wind has been up a lot and with a driver or a three-wood or a hybrid, if I hit those off the tee on the shorter par fours, I can tend to ride the wind straight up and then the ball doesn't go very far. So I've been using the four iron and literally hitting just low running stingers and it's produced really good results for me with a whole lot of rollout. It's actually helped my game a lot. I learned it in here, so let's do it. I've got the four iron and all I'm trying to do here, it's not about the carry, it's really just about the shot shape. I need the shot to go low. I need that shaft lean going down compressing the ball and having that nice little low draw, low spinner, low draw. Don't know what happened there. I think this ball has had it. Yep, okay. So that's literally the shot that I'm trying to hit on course. Look at that, launch eight degrees, carry 175, but it doesn't really matter about the carry. Roll out to 200 at 3000 spin. 130 mile per hour ball speed. The swing speed is always gonna be down because I'm abbreviating my backswing, but I'm teaching myself to hit that shot consistently so that I literally have a fairway finder on a short par four that goes 200 meters into the wind. 
mean, look at that. When you throw on that, that's like a dart going down there. That's always going to roll out. And, and, you know, some courses are going to give you more forgiveness with those sort of shots if they've got firm fairways than others. We're pretty firm here at the moment, I would say. So guys, that's how I use my Garmin R10 in general to practice. I worked on some things that I actually need to work on. I made sure that I was hitting the right numbers. I made sure that I was getting myself in the circle. What I would do if I'm practicing on my own without the camera, which I'm about to go and do now, is I would do a lot more of these. I would, I would constantly change clubs. I would constantly change distances and I would hit a lot more shot after shot after shot after shot. That would get boring for you guys to watch, but I would be trying to get everything inside those circles as often as possible. Set myself a challenge that out of every 10 shots, I want to try and get four in the circle and I might go to three different pins for, for those 10 shots. So they're the kind of games that I play with myself when I'm, when I'm in the simulator here. But um, let me know how you go. Let me know how you practice. It might be different to me. Throw that in there in the comments. And like I said, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Plenty more awesome content coming and I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers guys.